Oh, hi all. Welcome back to the John Deere B tractor restoration. And in that picture, we uh, have the internals of the governor case. I thought that would be the easiest way to show how the governor is timed to the rest of the engine. So the governor does two jobs. Through the movement of those weights and levers, it controls the position of the throttle valve in the carburetor, which in turn controls how much fuel air mixture is laid into the engine. And also, it is the main drive for the magneto. So obviously it's very important to get it timed up correctly to the rest of the engine to ensure that the spark that the magneto produces falls correctly for the position of where the pistons are inside the engine. Now with these two cylinder John Deere tractors, and I think it's pretty much the same for all of the petrol ones with the magneto system, the magneto produces two sparks on every four cycles of the engine. And these, four, these two sparks obviously have to land when the piston is at the top dead centre of the engine. Now that happens in two, two times in the four cycles. It happens obviously on the compression stroke and it happens on the exhaust stroke. It's just the way they're designed and um, I guess it's because of the fact it's only two cylinders. And so, like the um, timing the cam gear to the crankshaft gear, there's two dots, and so there are two dots on the opposite side of the gears for timing the governor to the, um, to the camshaft gear. So first off, what you've got to ensure and it doesn't matter which piston you use, whether it's on the compression stroke or the exhaust stroke, you've got to ensure that one of those pistons is at top dead centre. And by top dead centre, I mean it's got to be the con rod inside. There we go, the con rods there. You can't see the other one because it's just hidden there. The con rods inside have to push the piston to its at top of its position in the, um, in the pit cylinder here. Now we can do that various ways. Um, the best way is to do make sure that the um, the two circles, the two holes in the flywheel, and the, the split that nips the flywheel onto the crankshaft in that one fixed position are all horizontal. We can also ensure that the dot there, which some kind person has put on this engine at the late, early the later stage, lines up with the the pressing on the fifth and sixth gear. Now that will ensure that obviously your piston is at the top dead centre and therefore hopefully it will have brought that dot round on the camshaft gear for you to be able to line the dot up on the um, governor gear, governor drive gear. Now for some strange reason those dots will only line up when the engine's actually on an exhaust stroke on the left hand cylinder. Um, I don't know why. There you go, that's how it is. But by lining that up, if we come round to the other side, and this is the thing, by lining that up, the drive for the magneto, which is this chap here, is also horizontal to the engine this way. Now it is slightly off there, um, not far but it is slightly off and that's only because obviously the gear is not in its casing and um, it's only perched on a socket but you can move it you know one way or the other and it will line, it'll go horizontal, it'll line up. So it's really simple, extremely simple. Ensure that that You've got the one piston or the other 
Ideally, with this case here, is you ensure that you've got your left-hand piston on an exhaust stroke, which we know it's on, or I know it's on, because obviously I've set it up to show this, which hopefully, therefore, will bring those two dots, or it'll bring that bottom dot up on the camshaft gear so we can see it, and therefore we can line the, cam, the uh, governor drive gear up in relation to it. So there's nothing complicated. Just remember the two th things. The engine has to be on a compression stroke or, no, I shouldn't say compression stroke. It has to be on a top dead center position with the piston. Um, and I mean, you could do it on the compression stroke. What you would do is make sure the engine's on a compression stroke. And then you would just make sure that when you plonked the, um, the governor gear onto the, um, camshaft gear you just make sure ensure that the slot on this side is horizontal so yeah so the key thing make sure you've got that piston at a top dead center and make sure that when you drop the governor on to the top of the engine in its case that the slot there is horizontal to the engine and as I say it doesn't matter if it's exhaust or compression in this situation, it's on an exhaust stroke because I can show you that the two dots there line up, which I've marked with white paint. So I hope that hasn't confused the matter even more. <laughs> there are videos out there on YouTube which I find a bit confusing or try to make more of it than it is. Um, yeah, so, so my next job now is to put that gear and its bob weights, etc into the case which I'll um, do on another video and then I'll show how to tie uh, not sorry time but how to um, get the correct backlash and heel on the fanshaft gear in relation to the um, to the bevel gear on the uh, on the uh, governor now the, this governor I believe is quite is, is to the, I mean, this is a mid style John Deere B. Um, I think the early style John Deere B's are a similar sort of setup, but on the later styled, late, late style John Deere B, the governor weights are actually on this gear. Um, but it's all, they still are the same. You've got to get that crop, that slot in here, horizontal, and to ensure that a piston, doesn't matter which one it is, is at top dead center. Bring it compression or exhaust stroke. Alright then, thank you. Hope that's been of some sort of help. <laughs>